Hello, everybody, and welcome to the February 24th Trips and Traps. Andy Sterling, joined by Eric Donovan. We have five races to bring you in one segment this week. Great technology. You can put all the videos into a one segment now, so you don't have to come back and watch a second one. And uh, a lot of good action from last week, the six-day racing week. We'll get things started with race number eight from February 15th, the Philly Amir 2 of that allowance option of Kramer going six. We're looking at the 1A Smart Stride. You would think at this point, considering the number of slow paces we had seen, here is Sharp Stride. And granted, she's not a speed horse, but considering the lack of pace in here, she needed to be closer. And as you watch the early part of the race, and I didn't finish my other thought, She's right up towards the front, but she does the opposite of what our friend Richard Migliori does. She keep, loses her position going backwards. Keep in mind right now, take a mental picture of where Smart Stride is, and then check back at the uh, top of the stretch. It's just amazing how much ground this horse loses, not only from front to back, but she's also going to lose ground going to the outside around the turn as well. It, it, it's amazing. Now, Cohen, David Cohen Rider tries to stay towards the two path. He doesn't angle out till too late. The fractions were 24 and 3, 48 and 3, and she's all the way back here. So it's not as though they speed it up at any point in the race. They went 24 and 3, 24, 24. And she just lost all that ground in that quarter. And you can see he's holding her back. She's in the two path. Okay, he doesn't want to swing her too wide. But she angles out here the last quarter of the turn, angles out top of the stretch, and amazingly finishes second. Shockingly, the horse who set the pace won the race with Ramon. I can't believe Midnight Visit actually you know, went to the lead here and, and took advantage of a slow pace with Ramon. Look at this finish from, from Smart Stride, though. I mean, it's going to be two and a half lengths at the end. But, I mean, this is a horse that you can argue might have lost about seven lengths between dropping back and losing position that way and then having to go wide around the turn. She she lost any chance to win this race because she put herself at an enormous competitive disadvantage. Now, you could argue that the running style that she has gave her a disadvantage to start and Midnight Visit has more speed, so the race played at the wheelhouse of the winner anyway. But Smart Stride, it's, if she had run fifth, could have said, well, you know, she probably wouldn't have been able to overcome mm -hmm. it. But the fact that she made that big run and ran second leads me to believe if she had maintained that early position and not dropped back so far, she would have won. Yeah, I'd like to see a more aggressive ride there for sure. Uh, we'll move on to our second race now. This is the second race from the 17th, the maiden special weight for New York Red Phillies and Mares. Going six furlongs, we're looking at the four. She's always hot who breaks slow. And the uh, first time out for Ed Allard. Yeah, this is a horse. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this off to Eric. Uh, he's more excited about her going forward I don't have a strong opinion about her one way or the other yeah I mean there's not a whole lot to show in here I mean this is just a horse that I think is going to benefit greatly from first from the, the, this run first time out she pretty much drops back off the screen then you don't see her again until you know about the quarter pole here you know kind of try to close up the inside something you know you like to see a first time starter do be able to pass some horses to the inside puts in a good little run late the uh, you know the winner of the race is uh, sitting second right now off a horse that made a big move around the turn carrot core magic and you know the four she's always hot it's going to just make a make a nice run here I think second time out, this horse is going to be dangerous and, uh, you know, should be a fair enough price, maybe four to one or something like that, depending on what kind of field you get in. Yeah, I thought the field was coming the other bit at the end. I don't have a strong opinion. One thing about it, though, it is a net hour trained horse, so it's possible this horse could show up at Philly Park as well, or Parks, I should say. So if you're interested, put it on your race, your horses to watch list, because she may well not run here. Yeah, I mean, a New York bred, though, so I would think That's that, you true. know, with, with the bigger point. purses, he would, he would try to get her up here unless there was a race that he, you know, really liked at a time that he really liked down there at Parks, but certainly Good one point. to put on, the, put on the stable mail just to make sure if, if you're interested in her next time out. Move on to our third race now. This is the 8th from February 18th, a $7,500 claimer for a four-year-old's not going six furlongs. It was an extremely fast pace set by the favorite in this race, Devilish Stunt, who ends up running fifth. A very hustling ride. The horse that I thought was kind of wacky is the 12 key victory. A horse who has a terrible lifetime record, almost 50 starts, and I believe has won just two times. And a horse who's sort of run on different services, different distances. But I thought when you consider the way the race was run and Key Victory chasing four wide the whole way, it's kind of amazing that he finished third. And Devilish Stunt, I just think it was way too over an aggressive a ride. And it sort of took away any advantage he could have on the pace. And a horse trained by the same trainer back here ends up winning the race with a good setup. Yeah, maybe, it was, uh, maybe it was just a rabbit type of run for, for Devilish Stunt here. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, a horse that, uh, you're right, set a, set a very fast pace for this level and uh, you know, one to uh, certainly consider next time out. And uh, you'll see the Key Victory still there. 
Belair going wide, and uh, you know, Key Victory hasn't had that many chances in for 7,500. Only the second time in a row that uh, he's been in here, so perhaps this is the right level for him, and maybe you know he could do some damage here off this trip. And he's never going to be that short a price. And you see, of course, Devil's Stun still in front, he'll end up finishing fifth. You see where Key Victory is, and he never stops running. I mean, he keeps digging in. Now, keep in mind, while the horse that won closed, the horse that was second, he was chasing the pace also, but he was saving ground as opposed to Key Victory. And you know what? Key Victory is never going to be, as I said, that short a price because of his record. And if he could draw a reasonable post and get in a race, because he has the speed to put himself in the game, and get in a race where he can get a fair trip, I think he could actually win a race and pay a fair enough price because these races, as we know, can get a little bit hungry at times. And he's a little bit buried. Uh, I agree. I think that's a, that's a very good point. He used some more speed in his previous start. He was up chasing a 23 quarter, so you know he has the speed to adapt. And he was, you know, in good striking range throughout there with the better post. And you know a different kind of scenario here. Perhaps uh, key victory one to look out for it. Uh, you know make it uh, three for uh, forty six next. Yeah, time. I really think that he is interesting. I know it sounds ridiculous and devilish stunt. If he came back in the same group and he got a more patient ride, maybe I'm wrong. I think he would win. I agree. All right, race number four for this uh, episode of Trips and Traps. We'll take a look at the seventh from uh, February nineteenth. It's a New York Red Nominers a one for four year olds and up. Cap the moment uh, breaks slowly here. Yeah, well, you'll see Cap the moment stumble at the start. You can see his sort of legs go out from beneath him, and that's you know it's not one of these where he hits his nose or anything, but he kind of lost it in his, in his legs there. And as you'll see when we show you the pan, he ends up you know dropping back pretty severe in this race. He's already a good two, three lengths behind. And what's interesting about this race is it's dominated on the front end by a horse who surprisingly was second choice, high as boy, a horse that, that Jeremiah Engelhart's done a great job with since he's taken over. He wins this race dominating on the front end, and you don't see a great deal of closing except for Cap the Moment. The problem is, and I've been a fan of Cap the Moment, comes from low percentage connections, and I think the cat's a little out of the bag because he runs so well in this race. Yeah, but he is capped at the moment, and he always has those low, you know, low percentage connections. So you're probably going to get, you know, a fair enough price on him, I would think. And you know, this is a horse that uh, had some problems throughout the uh, 2011 campaign. Only managed to get off six races. There were some starts and stops along the way as well. He's five years old now. This is his second start of, you know, of his current form cycle, and perhaps he's just moving in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, he's still back in last. I think it is. I mean, I think he needed his first race. You watch his first race carefully. Clearly, it was a, a race where he just needed to get out the racetrack and stretch his legs a little bit. And in here, he really runs well because he's running by horses. I understand you could argue the race is kind of over. When you consider he spotted the field at the start, he makes this big run in the race. I think he runs very well. I like Cap the Moment as a horse. I'd like to see him get a fair chance to show what he's capable of because he's always been a little bit better to me than he appears on paper. I yeah, agree. We'll look forward to seeing him third start back off the uh, layoff for uh, uh, David Smith. And we'll move on to our final race now, the sixth race from February 20th, a New York Red Maiden claimer for three-year-old Phillies going a mile and 70 yards. Yeah, and it's not obviously not that strong a field. David Cohen rides the winner, gives this horse a perfect ride, and you contrast the trip that the winner gets, and the winner is this horse here, with the trips that these two horses get, especially the eight, who ends up finishing second in this race. And you realize that it was really the difference was the trip that the winner got more than anything else because you could argue the eight rivers end, even though she lost by four lengths was best, the three horse Royal Suspicion runs fifth certainly doesn't get a fair chance as well. No, I mean, the, the pace is a key issue in the race, too, because it really, you know, slows down and comes together as they move around the turn, and, and both Royal Suspicion and Rivers End are, you know, kind of in the back there where they want to make runs, and they want to be, you know, they want the field a little bit more spread out. They're just not comfortable in that spot, so they're going to move to the outside, and you see Royal Suspicion move out and force Rivers End out a little bit more. These horses are going to move to the outside. Once they get out in the clear, they're going to make a move up to the front end. Yeah, and it just becomes sort of disastrous, and it's one of the problems we've had here over the winter because we We've seen such dramatically slow paces, especially in the route races. As you see that Royal Suspicion has now moved from last all the way up to the lead and is sitting right off the leader, and the eight rivers end is out there all the way in the outside, out in the clear, and, 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 and it's just sort of an untenable position. And it's one of the reasons that I think if you, as Richie says, get your position going forward from the start, you don't end up in these predicaments where you're sitting last in a slow pace and the field bunches and the horse sort of carries you there. If you establish early and they go quick, they'll get away from you. 
if you establish early and they don't go quickly, you'll be sitting up there in a very comfortable position as opposed to making these premature moves and big moves from the back of the pack that these horses did. Yeah, I mean, these riders kind of got stuck, uh, you know, stuck in a tough spot there because, you know, if they're sitting where they were toward the back of the pack while wide, they'd have absolutely no chance. So you got to try to make some kind of run, you, you know, and, and get some kind of position to save some ground around the turn here. But then you're forcing yourself into an early premature move, and you know, these type of horses are just going to collapse late from that. And you can see the contrast because Cohen, on the other hand, in Sally's Dream, he left. Yeah, he had the inside, but he also left and had that early lead. When they went a little, he dropped off them a little bit, but he never lost any real position in the race, and it worked out for him. Yes, he started out the advantage of the rail, but what if the eight had left more strongly in here? She wouldn't have had a lot of problem getting herself closer to the rail in there, and she would have had more position. It, it, listen, it's easy to sit here and be armchair jockeys, and we're not suggesting that we have all the answers, but you watch these horses, and your job as horse players is to say, did these horses run better or worse than they look on paper? And we feel that both these horses ran better than they did on paper. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, those paces certainly, uh, you know, affect the way things go. And a uh, two-turn race, if you got a horse from the outside that's stretching out, may have a, you know, a little bit of speed. You got to be able to use that to your advantage. And you know, if you're not going to go for the lead, at least get you know some kind of decent position where you be up close and you know saving a little bit of ground on the turn. The best rides you see, and one of the reasons that Ramon is a perennial leading rider, are the rides that are thought about, thought out before they're done. Have a plan when you get in there. Anyway, trips and traps at NairaInc.com. We can always use your help. Thanks for watching.